All right, these are chapter 15 and 16. These are the chapters for old age. Uh, the first slides are on the theories of aging and health issues that you might encounter in old age. On the lifespan, it, for the textbook, it is 78.8 on average. It is 76.4 for men and 81.2 for women. It's probably slightly different from that now, but that was what was reported in the textbook. Anyways, point being, there are five years between difference between men and women. So that could be a significant dif difference. <clears throat> Again, we are living longer, so chronic health issues are going to become a serious issue here. Also another serious issue that's maybe not talked about enough is not having enough for retirement will be a problem as well. On the theories of aging, there are several. With evolutionary theory, what the book talks about is, for this section, is having things like Alzheimer's being removed by natural selection why doesn't that happen? So why do diseases that affect old people, why do they still exist? Why aren't they being selected out? And their theory is that natural selection is a young person's game. So reproduction is done by young people. So according to evolutionary theory, older people don't matter as much in this theory. They've already reproduced or they didn't reproduce in their time to pass their genes is over. So the diseases that affect the old people don't matter as much according to evolutionary theory. Another theory is cellular clock theory, basically the idea that cells can divide a maximum of 75 to 80 times, then the cells can no longer divide, and then you die. Why these cells die might be because the tips of their chromosomes, uh, these tips you may have heard of before, they're called telomeres, and these telomeres, they become shorter and shorter, and after about 80 rep uh, replications, these tips are drastically reduced, and the cell can no longer divide. Healthy people that are in their 100s uh, have longer telomere length compared to unhealth, unhealthy people in their hundreds. And hopefully something that doesn't come as a surprise to the people that are watching this, if your leisure activity is sitting around staring at a screen, you have shorter telomere length on average. Again, all there's all these different correlations that go into the things that can cause aging, premature aging. There are some tests that measure your tel telomere length. Uh, I haven't done it, so I can't speak to the veracity of it, but it might be something you look at. It does kind of go back to the idea of age identity. So if you're 60 and you feel like 40, that might be related to your telomere length. All the things that we've talked about are related. Nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress management, screen usage, all those things have the potential to age you prematurely in a negative way. There's also some research into keeping telomere length through stem cells. Uh, it's interesting stuff. It's possibly through research into aging that you guys uh, might have the potential to live longer or better quality lives, but you're probably going to have to have money to be able to do that. It's kind of related to, you know, we've talked about SES uh, a bunch. SES definitely can have an effect on your later life too. Another theory, free radical theory, says people age because when their cells metabolize energy, they produce byproducts, and these unstable oxygen molecules are known as free radicals, and these free radicals can damage DNA. You will hear about uh, free radicals and cancer a lot. Overeating causes free radicals. Calorie restriction and exercise reduce them. Related is mitochondrial theory. Mitochondria are the, in the cells and they supply energy for function, growth, and repair. Mitochondria, uh, can, they can also fix free radical damage. And there's some series out there that calorie restriction and intermittent fasting can help clean up mitochondrial damage. Uh, autophagy is one of the words for that. So it's possible. The research is not real clear as far as humans go. Side note related to calorie restriction, in lab studies with animals, it has shown to increase lifespan. It's probably related to the length of the telomeres, uh, limiting free radicals, and the mitochondrial health. So all this stuff in the future will probably be condensed into a, all these different things will be convinced uh, or condensed into a unified theory of aging, probably my guess. On calorie restriction, they talk about about a 30% decrease from the recommended calories. So for women, this would be about 1,120 calories a day. For men, this is about 1,540 calories a day. So that does not seem like very much. Uh, but there's some research that shows eating this amount can prolong life. So something to think about. It's a trade-off there. Some other issues in old age. So cardiovascular issues are going to be the number one cause of death. Falls are the leading cause of injury and even deaths among older adults. So if you fall and you get a hip fracture, your chances of dying within a year from pneumonia are really high. So keep your bones strong. 
arthritis, joint pain, stiffness. It is incurable. Exercise can help with this. Um, and studies have shown, at least for women, that engaging in leisure activities is correlated with less arthritis. So something to think about. Osteoporosis it is bone loss. Uh, this is one of the reasons that older people are kind of stooped over. It's because they're starting to lose the bone mass there. Is it more likely in women? It's linked to deficiencies in calcium, uh, vitamin D, estrogen, and lack of exercise, of course. For exercise and sleep, sleep during this age is actually better if you do exercise regularly. And for those that exercise at, in this age group, uh, they have a higher level of executive function, they process information more quickly, and there are delays in cognitive decline. If you get one thing from this course, I keep just, I keep, won't stop talking about it. If you get one thing from this course, exercise is extremely important for lifelong development. Also, some older people, uh, they just want to do cardio or maybe just walk, but strength training will help a lot too. That will help you to keep the bone tissue, help you keep muscle mass. Uh, maybe if you do fall and you break your hip, uh, if you've been doing strength training, maybe it doesn't break. Maybe you don't die from pneumonia because you've been exercising. So something else to keep in mind there. All right. That is the theories on aging and physical changes. The next slide, we will talk about cognition in older adults.